Once again, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, from the Roseville Avenue Armory in Newark, New Jersey. This is Joe Hassett speaking, and greeting you on behalf of Ken Nidal. We're about to go into the seventh period with a score tied at New Jersey 10 and Philadelphia 10. This is the second game in the current series with Philadelphia winning the first game, and of course, it's anybody's game right at this particular moment. We're coming up for a very colorful phase in the roller derby, the changeover, and skating for New Jersey will be number 61, Bobby Burns. Number 68 will be Virginia Domster. They're coming on the track right now. Number 60 is Mata Jean Payne. Number 65 is Norma Rosner. And number 64 is Millie Bruno. That's the New Jersey team. They're wearing orange jerseys, black shoulders, white numbers. I'll give it that Philadelphia team after this jam, and here to bring you the action is Ken Nidell. All right, up in front, moving in, Bobby Burns again. Burns has been used a lot out here tonight, offensively, by the Boston, New Jersey team. Followed by the blonde Philly from Philly, Bobby Johnstone, and a rock and roll. Johnstone takes over the lead now. Number 61, Bobby Burns moves in there. 10 and 10, all tied up out here at the Roseville Armory, Roseville Avenue in Newark, New Jersey, where the series just got started last night between Philadelphia and the Boston New Jersey team. It's a nice setup out here. All these seats are right on top of the track. Still chummy. 61 up in there now. Not so racks one up in there on little Bobby Burns as he took it. Burns is going to come up there and Rocker, now she went. Nice block. Burns threw plenty of power in there. Not very big little gal, but and she can go. She's rough. Hales from Chattanooga, Tennessee. 23 years of age. Nice look at little gal. Bobby comes in. You see her glance up at the clock? That's what we were talking about a little while ago. How the skaters watch that clock because they got to get in there. There's 45 seconds to go now. Burns got plenty of time. He's coming in on Johnstone. Who's he now coming to play a moment ago? Johnstone back in the blocking spot. Number 35, the captain of the Philadelphia team. Blocks back Burns. Down goes Burns, the leading down skater down. Stops it up. No score on that one. And trainer Freddie Cohen steps over the track and flips up in there. And Joe, I want to mention that uh, we've received over 5,000 letters from our fans on our network telling uh, us names and nicknames for the teams in the league, the six teams in the league. We told them that they could write to the home office, Roller Derby office, Madison Square Garden, New York City, New York, and select a name, a nickname for their favorite team of the six-team league. And over 5,000 letters have come in, and of course the winners are going to receive official Roller Derby skates, the same skates the champions use, uh, as prizes. Now the contest ends January 1st, so anybody that hasn't sent in the nickname they want to select for their team, any one of the six teams in the league, they can still do it, providing they get their letter in uh, the mail before January 1st. And, of course, they sent it to Madison Square Garden, Roller Derby office, New York City, New York. Skating for Philadelphia is number 32, Betty Jo Harris. 33 is Laura Stoss. 35 is Captain Bobby Johnstone. 37 is Kay Berber. And 39 is Donna Jean Cox. The action down there, here's Ken. All right, up in front, moving in. Really, Bruno. Bruno on the loose now. Bruno moving in there, followed by... Key Berba, Berba number 37, up in the lead for Philadelphia. Little Billy Bruno, local New Jersey girl, moves in there. She's the pride and joy out here. This gal has come a long way since her first race in roller derby action. Berba staggered into the rail. She was hit hard by this little gal, and she just could never get her momentum back to keep her on the track. She screwed along and hit the rail, as you well see. Now, Bruno out there all alone. She's a lone jammer. She's a potential scorer coming in for the New Jersey team. If she passes any member of the Philadelphia team in the striped jersey, she would score. And coming up first to try to score, or the girl she's going to try to score over first, rather, is number 37, Verma, who she knocked into the rail a moment ago. Verma says, come on. Sarah used that right hand, and she blocked her. Bruno trying to get her on the outside. Now can't do it. Nice blocking by Verma. Verma's slowing down on Millie Bruno. Bruno trying to get by there. Can't do it. Good defensive play on the part of... Hey, Verba. Verba's a big gal. You can see the difference in size between these two. Bruno's a little bit of a gal. Verba boxer again. Plenty of time, but Bruno's having a lot of trouble, and she's in a rail. No score. 10 and 10 tied up out here in Newark, New Jersey. Well, thanks. You know how the roller derby goes. Just to refresh your memory again, the idea is to lap the opposition. If you pass one or two, it's one point. Three or four, it's two points. If you pass five, it's five points. Uh, jam is two minutes. The length of it is two minutes. The maximum length. The skating period is 15 minutes. 
That jam is over. If the leading jam skater falls or leaves the track with both skates, in case of an official timeout, that jam ends. Or if the leading jam skater places his hands on his hips or by penalty. Penalties are handed out for holding, illegal blocking, unnecessary roughness. And in cases of severe roughness and insubordination, a five-minute penalty is handed out. And in case you get too tough, bing, you're out of the game. Just as simple as that. All right, that buzzer sends them on their way. Here's action, here's Ken. All right, Molly Bruno has it again, and up comes Key Verba. Well, these scouts are about even on what they did to each other. With Bruno hit uh, Verba so hard, she went on the rail, and then Verba come around and did the same thing to Millie, but now here they go again. Rock'em, sock'em action on the big bank track. Down they both go. The jam has stopped up. The leading jam skater's down. Stopping up 10 to 10 to score, and now Joe Hassel. Well, you know, watching this makes me thirsty for a tall, cool glass of black Milwaukee's finest beer. I'm from Milwaukee, and I ought to know It's the same old story wherever you go This is the tune you will always hear Glass is Milwaukee's finest beer, 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 beer Victor McLaughlin says Take it from me, Blatz is Milwaukee's finest beer I've lived there, I ought to know We're ready for action here. The girls are skating around, waiting for that buzzer to sound, which will send them on their way. That shot, which you're looking at, is as the skaters move into our cameras, which two of them, which are set at the far turn, and they skate right into it and then skate away from it. That buzzer tells them to get going, to get on their way. Eight minutes and 15 seconds left to go in the seventh skating period. And the score, New Jersey 10, Philadelphia 10. Time for lots of roller derby yet. Time for lots of action, and you'll see it. On their way. On their way and rolling, Bobby Johnstone. The bomb Philly from Philly takes out. There she goes. Had a little trouble with the track a couple of times there. Just kind of straightened it out again. They're rolling. Full speed ahead. There goes Monogene Payne, the captain of the New Jersey team out there. And she's hit by Bourbon. Hit hard. Then Bourbon takes one from Edie Branham. And Branham gets one right back. Man, how these gals can rock with those blocks. It's the only known sport where men and women are placed on an equal basis where you have an offense and a defense where blocking is concerned. There are other games when girls play uh, men's rules, but not like in roller derby because out here, and they put it out. Those men in the infield now waiting for their turn to skate the next big period, the big period of the night, the last period, have all the confidence in the world and their teammates on this track because the girls' score is added with the fellas, and it's up to the gals of these two teams now to bat it out. And they're doing it. There's Johnstone moving in. Rolls down that straight away now. That's how uh, Bobby's built. That slim hips and big shoulders. She throws that weight in there, brother. Something's got to give. And it's usually the other guy, the other gal, I should say. John Stone can rock. Here she comes out on the outside. Ronald Jean Payne. Hitting up on John Stone. Throwing her down. 30 seconds to go. Bobby John Stone, a chance for one through a five quarter. Passes one. That's Monagene Payne, but now down she goes. Monagene knocked her down with a beautiful block. No score on that one. Good defensive play on the part of Monagene Payne. But a point was gained and a nice play by Johnstone to make the score 11 to 10 and put it up here. And the seesaw battle goes out in front again over the New Jersey team. Well, that's what it's been all night. A very closely waged battle. Nobody has taken any great advantage. You always get the feeling that uh, the explosions are about to start, that nobody is going to run away from anybody. They seem to be saving themselves to that last ditch effort, which is one of the big things in roller derby. In other words, it's a case of saving all your guns for that final blast. I'll never forget one night. We had about 20 seconds left, and I uh, had mentioned to Ken that I didn't think there was enough time for a score, and bing, before I could say something, players went down like 10 pins. One skater got around in those few seconds and racked up enough points to win the game and pull his team from behind out in front. All right, action on the track, Ken. 
All right, Mata Jean Payne out on the loose, but right behind her, three members of Philadelphia. Mata Jean may try to outskate them, or she may cut it off. No, she cuts it off, stops it up. Place her hands on her hips, which is a privilege of any leading jam skater. As Philadelphia broke loose from the blocking of the New Jersey team in the pack, and Mata Jean didn't have a chance. She stopped it up, playing heads up. That's a nice close-up of Mata Jean Payne. Well, you friends, don't forget two big meets right here in this eastern area. One going on right now at the 9th Regiment Armory over in 14th Street in Lower Manhattan. And good seats are available for tomorrow night on the big night, New Year's Eve, Saturday night. All you got to do is call Judson 64646. That's Judson 64646 right now. Remember, you Blatt's fans, let's get with it and come out and see it over here in Newark, New Jersey at the Rosestone Armory. You can call that number two at Tumble 56494. Humble 56494. Call it right now in Newark, New Jersey. Here they go. Out of the jam. Bring it away. Number 67, Edie Branham. Branham moves in there. And number 35, Bobby Johnstone moves in with her. Coming in there, too, is Doris Doss and Monty Payne. Hey, look at that block. Down goes Doss. Scooting along. Out for the nice block in there. Now Johnstone got number two to one by Edie Branham and Monty Payne. Bobby Johnstone up in there now. Block back slow down by Monty. Monty blocking beautifully, leading Branham loose. Look at that blocking by Payne. Popular captain of the Boston, New Jersey team. A power at Johnstone slugging. Oh, look at Bobby cry. Here comes Branham moving in now. He, she is the one that can come in and do some damage here to the Philadelphia team who's leading by one point, 11 to 10 over New Jersey. Branham coming in there. There's three minutes and 42 seconds to go in this skating period. And there's a minute down, one to go. One goes down. Betty Joel Harris was knocked down. Branham gained one point. Comes in trying to gain more. Doris Doss, the big gal. Back here to block out on Branham. Branham has two. Knocks Doss down. Out on Branham. No, no. The jam is over. The leading jam skater being penalized. An illegal block on the part of Branham, but Branham gained one point by passing the fallen skater, Betty Joe Harris, and she did get the one point, but she fouled out, and the jam was stopped when the leading jam skater receives a penalty. And the score now, Joe, is tied up at 11-11. You bet, sir. 11-4 New Jersey, 11-4 Philadelphia. And there's Edith, and she is really mad, but the official detected that one perfectly. She grabbed a hold of one of the girls and pulled her down. Of course, it's the old trick, just like in basketball. If you're jumping for a ball, it's a quick grab. You pull him down, you out jump him, and that's what Edith was trying to do. She was trying to get the jump on the skater to pass, and uh, when she hit Doss, she pulled her down. Didn't thinking, not thinking, that the, uh, the officials would see that infraction. Two minutes, 35 seconds left to skate in the seventh period. Regulation time is eight periods, as you know, but in case it's all tied up at the end of eight periods, it goes into sudden death overtime, with the men and women alternating in five-minute periods. And our first team to score is the winner. All right, there they go on what may well be the last jam of the seventh period, Ken. All right, number 64, Melly Bruno of the New Jersey team breaks out. Bruno on the loose now. Dolores Doss of Philadelphia trying to follow in there, but Bobby Burns steps up in there and says, no, no, you're not going to play, so slow down here. Doss tries to get loose, and little Bobby Burns is after again, and little Millie Bruno is in the lead for the New Jersey Boston team. Number 64. Glanced over her shoulder to see what was happening, and she saw her teammates doing a good job in slowing down Philadelphia. They brought her moving in now. Notice how number 62, Reedy Randall, is slowing down the front of that pack. Randall is a stocky little gal who can block to the left as well as she can block to the right. Bruno hikes around. 45 down, 115 to go. Millie Bruno in the Orange and black uniform for New Jersey. Open it up. That orange appears gray to us, but that's his uniform right there you're looking at. New Jersey. Minute down, one to go. Bruno coming in now with a chance for a one, two, or five pointer. If she passes one member of the striped jersey, Philadelphia team, she'd gain one point. If she passed three members, she'd gain two. If she can pass five, the entire Philadelphia team, that's the best she can do. She'd gain five points. She's got 45 seconds to do it in. Lock it back nicely down, number 34, slowing down in there. Gloria McAuliffe of Philadelphia slowing down Millie Bruno. Bruno having trouble. And Bruno is slowed down. Beautiful blocking in there by McAuliffe. Bruno tries hard. Lost a little time there with good defensive play and lost a lot of ground too. 20 seconds to go now. Monatine Payne is dropping back to try to work on McAuliffe and try to get her teammate Bruno in there to break this tie. Bruno tries again. Monatine Payne blocking. Down goes Bruno. And they rule a point, an illegal block on the part of McCullough. And now Silver Rich runs over there, Joe, and protests, but the point is good, 12 to 11. 
An illegal block, and you can explain that, Coco. Well, uh, actually, I would say that uh, Lily Bruno had completely passed the girl. She got exactly in front of her. There was no doubt about it. And I think that on the basis of that, referee Ken Gurian made his call. Certainly, if I'd been in the same spot, I would have given that one point to New Jersey. In other words, uh, Silver is demonstrating with Elmer Anderson that they were all tangled, but as you saw, you saw it exactly as we saw it, that uh, Millie Bruno was out in front, that Gloria McAuliffe was in the middle, and then the third skater was Mata Jean Payne, and Gloria McAuliffe was definitely sandwiched in between them, and Millie Bruno definitely had passed him for the point. All right, the score now is New Jersey 12, Philadelphia 11, and we're ready to go into the eighth and final period. Certainly, the roller derby has taken north the way Black Spear has taken Milwaukee. Behold, Mysterioso Blatz, outstanding man of mystery. With nothing up his sleeves, you see, and now he has some bottle caps. He throws them up and thrice he claps. Down they come and spell out Blatz. A wondrous thing to see. And here he has upon the table a case of beer with a famous label. And now we'll see if he is able to make these bottles rise. The greatest feat of his career. He brings out not just any beer, but Blatz. This magic man is wise. Now we hear musicians tune and voices hum. And pretty soon there bursts upon us loud and clear that famous song of friendly cheer. Oh, I'm from Milwaukee and I ought to know it's the same old story wherever you go. You go. This is the tune you will always hear. Flats is Milwaukee's finest beer. All right, on the jam, little Frankie Bailey, number 65. Local New Jersey boy moving in there. With number 37, Phil Rupp of the Philadelphia team. One member of each team on the jam now moving in the pack and dropping to the back there. The big period of the night, 12 to 11. New Jersey leading the Philadelphia team in another great battle out here at the Rossville Armory on Roseville Avenue in Newark, New Jersey. There they go. The pack is rolling. 37 up there now with Joe, or little Frankie Bailey, rather. He looks a lot like Joe Fiotti. We call him once in a while Fiotti. They're both New Jersey boys. They're both on the same team. A nice block in there by little Frank Bailey. Bailey takes over. The only quite a bit bigger than uh, Frankie Bailey. Frankie holds that lead down now. Minutes down and one to go in this jam. On the inside comes the big guy, Phil Rupp. They're rumping in the pack. Rupp takes over the lead. Here's the pack. They're coming in about a quarter lap in the scoring zone. You'll see them. There they come. Moving in. Here they are. Two potential scores moving in on the defensive part of the game. In the back end of the pack. Here comes little Frank Bailey moving in now. The blocker back there to try to take care of his elbows. Anderson, the great coach of Philadelphia. Back there going up nicely to number 67. And it's Captain Johnny Carp of the New Jersey team. He's blocking Phil Rupp. Rupp is down. Lady Jam Skater down, stops it up. No score on that one. Call to 11. And it's New Jersey leading the visiting Philadelphia team. Now, here's some flash information for the family people in the New York area and the New Jersey area. Sunday is family time for roller derby fans. A day when they can take the kiddies to a matinee game, both here in Newark, here at the Roseville Armory, and Auburn, New York, at the 9th Regiment Armory on 14th Street in Lower Manhattan. Sunday's games will start at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. No game Sunday night. And remember, all kiddies under 12 will be admitted for tax only when accompanied by their parents on the Sunday matinees here in New Newark and also over in New York. Skating for New Jersey, number 62 is Buddy Collins, 64 is Herbie Plump, 65 is Frank Bailey, 67 is Captain Johnny Carp, and 69 is John Lewis. For Philadelphia, 31 is George Vogt, 35 is Buddy Atkinson, 37 is Phil Ruff, 39 is Coach Ellen Anderson, 40 is Speck Saunders, and being projected out in front is Buddy Atkinson, and here's Ken. All right, whipped out is Buddy Atkinson, a one, two, three shot. Speck Saunders over the elbows, Anderson over to Buddy Atkinson, and Atkinson rather loose. Atkinson with a candy stripe jersey for the Philadelphia team is moving in. Wow, what a block that was. Max Saunders was rough with that one. And now all four members of the New Jersey team are pulling away from the blocking of Philadelphia in the pack. Look at him chase Buddy Atkinson. And this New Jersey team is rolling. Look at him go. One, two, three. There's four of them. There they are. Up in front. 35, Buddy Atkinson cut it off. He couldn't outskate four men in New Jersey, and the fans love it here. Look at the expression on the New Jersey fans as they really idolize their team. Joe, that was a nice play on the part of the uh, New Jersey team that time. Yes, it was. Of course, the Philadelphia 
team's defense kind of crumbled that time. They could have boxed Frank Bailey instead of trying to skate with the former Jersey men who had broken away, thus making it tougher for Phil Ruff to try to score. They could have tried to box Frank Bailey and picked up a point, which would have tied it all up. All right, here we go again. Action on the pack. Ten. All right, a double whip, a reverse whip. Rex Connors over to George Moon, and inside comes Buddy Atkinson again. Well, you don't do it the first time. Well, you try, try again. And Buddy says, I'll go, and he's out. Rex Connors, number 40, up there, number 62. Buddy Collins of the New Jersey team, breaking loose. Buddy moving after him. Look at him. Look at him. Oh, he almost lost his balance in that rail. He missed it, though. A lot of nerve to be a roller derby skater. Of course, they get big dough because they're in great competition. 35 up in there now. Buddy Agatha holding it down. Buddy Collins moving in after him. Buddy striding. Trying to hold that lead down now. And Speck Saunders is controlling the front of the pack. Stone it down. Buddy's whistling now. He says, I'm coming, boys. Get something open up in there for me. Open that hole up. Here he comes. Buddy Agatha moving in. Coming in. Elbow Anderson blocks up. One is blocked up. Two. He's past three. Two points. Play. Two points racked up by Philadelphia's Buddy Atkinson. Look at Buddy hold his hand up, Joe. And there's the scoreboard. The complexion again, teams. 13 to 12, Philadelphia out in front. Nine minutes and 15 seconds left to go in the regulation time. Over Anderson that time doing a splendid job along with Atkinson. Buddy had to come whipping through there real quick to score because he was being tailed by a New Jersey player and he had to come through there, pick up his points, cut the jam off. Prevent New Jersey from looping through and also picking up a point. So Philadelphia is now on front 13 to 12, 8 minutes and 50 seconds left to go in the game. Nobody's leaving, nobody's walking out of this one. This is going to go right down to the wire. All right, then. By the sounds off and rolling. Phil Ruff, Philadelphia, white shoulder strike. Candy Stripe Jersey, number 37 out there, right behind. Right behind him, moving in, is Don Lewis of the New Jersey team. See him throw his hands at his hips and try to cut it off because Georgie Bowe, number 31, moves up there. Three across the board now. One, two, three. And New Jersey out number two to one. Lewis tried again. See him. He's down. He hit hard and jumps up like a sack in the box. He's out of the play. He tried hard to cut that one off. He couldn't do it. These two Philadelphia boys are loose. Georgie Bowe without the helmet on. Moving in there. So rough. 37 right behind him. Johnny Carp is trying. Look at him. Captain Johnny Carp. They call him the Whirling Dervish. He's ruling out there. He's giving it all. Man, oh man, how much can you give? Now Lewis going down on two members of the Philadelphia team. Both scores. And Rupp scores. And both cuts it off. Two points gained by Philadelphia. One by Rupp. And one by George Bolt. Bolt looked around, cut the jam off, pledging his hands on the zip while he leaves the jam when he saw Johnny Carp moving up on there. And now the score 50 to 12. Philadelphia leads Joe Hassel. Well, Ken, I'd like to have a dollar tonight for every television spectator who's sipping Blatt's Milwaukee's finest beer. In Milwaukee, premium beer capital of America, Blatt's is the largest selling beer because it's Milwaukee's finest beer. There's no doubt about it. Blatt's is Milwaukee's finest beer. I lived in Milwaukee. I ought to know. Take a tip from Brian Dunleavy. Try Blatt's today. There's seven minutes and 18 seconds left in this game with Philadelphia leading 15 to 12. And you can be sure now that New Jersey will have to pull the stoppers out. Three points is still a lot of points to pick up the way this Philadelphia team is skating. There's Philadelphia huddling, setting up their patterns. Al Janowitz, number 34, is in there. 33, Bob Ventner is also in there for Philadelphia. 40 is Speck Saunders. 35 is Buddy Atkinson. 39 is Elmer Anderson. 67 is Johnny Carp of New Jersey. 61, Sid Honick. 60 is Big Carl Payne. 66 is Joe Fiotti. All right, Ken. All right, up in front. Bob Fetner, number 33, moves off for the candy stripe. Jersey, the Philadelphia team, and don't think this Philadelphia team is in red hot. You New Jersey fans better come out and see your club. And they need some support with this team in here. This Philadelphia team is rough and tough. Rick 
Hart's up in there. Saunders taking over the lead now. Sid Harness with him. Number 35, Buddy Atkinson up in there. Blocking back on big Moose Payne. Sid Harness holds the lead down now. Harness in there. Right behind him, Spec Saunders. There's Johnny Clark, the captain of the New Jersey team. Blocking back Bob Bender, number 33. Slowing him down. Leaving it up to Spec Saunders and to number 61, Sid Harness. Big bronze guy for the New Jersey team. Now goes number 33, Bob Bender. And now, Saunders is in a hit with a hard block. Now goes Spec Saunders, a beautiful leaping block in there by Sid Harness. Harness comes in now, and the crowd is roaring. Harness moving in now, coming in the back of the pack. He's the only one that can score after knocking Spec Saunders out of the play. Elbows Anderson back to the block on Anderson in there. Look at him block back. Harness tries to rough his way through there. Anderson, no one to be a one of the greatest blockers in the business, has given it to one of the best offensive men in the business. Harness being blocked by Anderson. Anderson slowing him down. 35 seconds to go, plenty of time. Anderson blocking hard. And is getting elbows. Harness is giving him plenty of elbows. And Anderson's giving him plenty. Harness trying to get in there now. He's trying to get by Anderson. Anderson blocking it back, slowing him down. And coming up in there to cut it off is number 34. A beautiful play on the part of Janowitz. Janowitz came all the way around and to cut that one off, and Anderson did some of the greatest blocking scene in a long, long time on the track, Joe. Well, I'll tell you one little cute trick there. Sid Harness, as the picture shows, what Harness did is he climbed up the back of Elmer Anderson and kept pounding Elmer on the top of the head with his elbows. So as soon as that jam had ended, Harness skated up in front of Anderson, pointed to both of his elbows, pointing to one and then the other, is to say, well, I call you elbows and I gave them to you. <laughs> he really did too, didn't he? <laughs> All right, that score hasn't changed. It's still Philadelphia 15, New Jersey 12. Elmer really took a beating that time on the head, but he was trying to gain a little swinging move so that he could go to work with his own elbows. Okay, Ken. All right, out and rolling. Silver Rich up there, score 15 to 12. Philadelphia leading. Rich in a stall game, cut the jam off, stopped it up. Four minutes and seven seconds to go in the game. Now, you friends of New York, don't forget the big series going on at the 9th Regiment Armory, 14th Street between 6th and 7th in Lower Manhattan. For our reservations, call right now, Dustin 64646. Dustin 64646 in New York. Here they go now. Spex Hunters up in front. Spex breaking out beautifully, moving in there. Three minutes and 48 seconds, 47 seconds. Back up in there now with Big Boost Payne. Cut off by Spex Hunters. The stall game is on. And New Jersey is going to have a tough time with the clock showing three minutes and 35 seconds to go and the fans are booing. They don't like it. It's the New Jersey crowd out here. And you, friends of the New Jersey area, remember the phone number? The call is on both 56494. Uh, both five, six, four, nine, four. You can call right now for reservations for this here in Newark at the Roseville Armory on Roseville Avenue. Wonderful transportation. Here comes the play. Rich is out on the open. Rich moving in there now. Big Hudson Payne right behind him. Followed by Sid Harness. Two against one now. And Rich is off again. Stops it up. Three minutes and five seconds. Joe, they're in a good one. Yes, they are. And the other surprising part of this thing is that Silver Rich and Sid Sanders and those fellas have been skating for a long time. And of course, Carl Payne tried to uh, save himself and commit to this to get a part of the game fresh so that he could outskate them, and he is. He can outskate them, but they're standing out in front, giving it everything that they've got, and they're managing to cut these kids off. Now Payne is at the head of that pack, so watch the strategy right here. Carl is clubbed away. They're breaking out in front again. It's Buddy Atkinson, and it's Carl Payne who's now out in front. Payne has drawn away from the All right, big one, Payne is loose. Payne got loose on a nice block in there by Rogers. Not in front, but not long enough because he was hit by Sid Harness. And now he's working on Janowitz. The clock showing two minutes and 17 seconds to go. New Jersey team is desperate. Harness blocking back on Janowitz, running on his skates. Now look at him go. Janowitz having trouble now with Harness blocking and Sid Harness, the coach of the Boston New Jersey team, moves on the loose to score. Philadelphia, 12 for the New Jersey team. Time left, a minute and 56 seconds to go. Time is away, a minute and 53, a minute and 52, a minute and 50 seconds. All that's left in Big Moose Payne has got to get in there. He's got a minute and 15 seconds to go, actually, on the jam. That's all he's got on the jam, a minute and 10 seconds. There'll be a few seconds left over after this jam is over. A minute down, a minute to go. It'll be 30 seconds to go after this jam is over. Here comes the play now. Payne moves in on big elbows. Anderson. Anderson back in the block out. Coming in now. On 
Brown has Robin back to help his coach in there. Payne slowed down by Anderson. Anderson getting away from Harness Block, but Harness is going to come out and try to take him out. 45 seconds to go on his stand now. Harness trying to lead him in there. This Philadelphia team has been red hot. Anderson take it hot. Take it high. A score. He passed one. Trying to get by Spec Saunders now. Saunders, great offensive man is passed. Pass two. Moves in on double six. He's battling. He's battling. He's trying to get by Rich. He's passed three. We call it too fast. Rich is doing a terrific job. He goes down Rich. He never did pass Rich. We saw it one way, but the officials were there, and we were sorry that we called that because he just passed Rich on a beautiful defensive play. Had he gained one point in it, 15 to 14. They gave him one or two points, Joe. They gave him two, Ken. Uh, no, they've corrected it. You were right. Yes, sir, you were right, Ken. Because uh, just as you say, we certainly never did get past Rich. Rich uh, hung over and stayed right in there, and they have now corrected the scoreboard to read Philadelphia 15, New Jersey 13, but they did pick up two points on there. They ran past the 12, the 13, the 14 to make it 15, 14, but even at that, I'm sure that Philadelphia would have held on to win as they do. For Philadelphia 15, New Jersey 13, 10. Well, Joe, it's certainly a lot came out here. The Philadelphia team is still red hot. That's two wins out of two here in the Roseville in the Roseville. Avenue in Newark, New Jersey. And so the series has got coming up, and we're going to watch and see just how Philadelphia fares against this rough Jersey team. It's been great being with the Blast fans tonight, and now Joe Hassel. At fun, New Jersey takes the second game in a row. They lead in games two to none. Robert Correction leads New Jersey in games two to none. And the score in tonight's game is Philadelphia 15, New Jersey 13. You can multiply this crowd by thousands, and you gain the idea of the enthusiastic demand for Blacks. Milwaukee's finest beer. Roller Derby, America's finest sports spectacle, brought to you by Blatt's, Milwaukee's finest beer. Where America's finest beers are brewed, Blatt's is the leading beer. As folks from Milwaukee will tell you, I'm from Milwaukee. I know. Blatt's is Milwaukee's finest beer. The preceding program, originally broadcast by ABC in New York, has come to you by special video recording. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.